1992, Ilhan Omar came to this country from a refugee camp in East Africa, Kenya. Three years later, she and her family applied for and received refugee status in the United States. Five years after that, she became a U.S. citizen, and she's been attacking the United States as a racist hellhole pretty much ever since. According to Omar, there's barely a difference between this country and terrorist groups like al-Qaeda. In a 2013 interview, o Omar complained that people seemed to think there was a big difference between America and al-Qaeda. Watch. When I was in college, I took uh, a terrorism class. Every time the, the, the professor said al-Qaeda, he sort of, like, his shoulders yeah. went up and, you know. Yeah, he's in command like, here. Yeah. Al-Qaeda, you know, hospital. You don't say America with an yeah. intensity. You yeah. don't say England with yeah. an intensity. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't say um, the army with an intensity. So she still feels this way. We know because she recently spoke to a group hosted by the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE. And while there, the congresswoman complained that America is bigoted against Muslims. They're second class citizens, she said. She offered no proof of that. It's an absurd claim. Muslims live with far greater freedom in America than they do in any Islamic country on the planet. That's why they move here. Millions and millions more would like to join them. And you would too if you were them. That's why Congresswoman Omar lives here, too, and not in Somalia. In America, by the way, she's an elected member of Congress. Could she do that in Saudi Arabia? No. Is she grateful for that? No. She never stops complaining. And as part of that complaining, she made this now famous remark about 9-11. CARE was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. Some people did something, but we're the real victims here. Omar's understatement attracted plenty of criticism. The New York Post ran a cover showing images of the 9-11 attacks, in case you'd forgotten what some people did. Then late last week, the president joined the criticism by tweeting this video. CARE was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something you have no idea right, right oh, now. Oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> Some people did something. Oh, my goodness. There is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. Some people did something. A little over the top? Yeah, maybe. If you're Yohan Amar, you probably wouldn't like that video. People don't like to be criticized. Got it. But would you feel physically threatened by that tweet? Well, not unless you believe that disagreement is the same as violence. And as it happens, the left does believe that disagreement is the same as violence or claims to believe that. All of a sudden, everyone on television is telling us that Trump is trying to hurt Ilhan Omar. Many are calling Trump's tweet and that video an incitement to violence against the congresswoman. Donald Trump is trying to incite violence. This is not just incitement to violence. This is an incitement to violence. The goal is inciting violence. We are getting to the level where, the, where this is an incitement of violence. No question is he inciting violence towards Muslims, not even only Ilhan Omar, but Muslim Americans in this country. So Cory Booker, who will say literal, literally anything, went farther, of course. That's a signature move. Whenever everyone else is saying something ridiculous, Booker will triple down on the insanity and pretend to be completely sincere about it. In this case, Booker was happy to blame Trump for actual terror attacks. Since 9-11, we've had terrorist attacks in this country. The majority of them have been right-wing extremists, and the majority of those have been white supremacist attacks from a, a, a synagogue in Pittsburgh to a church in, in South Carolina. And these are white supremacist groups that use language, as we saw as far away as New Zealand, use our president's language almost as if it is a license for these attacks. I swear, in 20 years, Every fifth grader will believe 9-11 was committed by white supremacists. Totally true. You watch. You heard it here first. They're the real threat. We need to fear and suppress them. And that's what Booker's saying. And to prove it, he and so many demagogues on the left are forever telling us about the epidemic of hate crimes in this country. But they're lying. There is no epidemic of hate crimes. We check. We know what the numbers are. We check for California, the biggest state, the most liberal state. Here are the numbers. In 2017, the state of California convicted a total of 65 people of hate crimes statewide. 65 out of a population of almost 40 million people. By the way, there were fewer hate crimes in California in 2017 under Trump than there were in 1996 
under the Bill Clinton administration. That epidemic is fake. It's propaganda. They're trying to control you with fear. Your opinions are violence. That's what they're saying. Your opinions are violence. Disagreeing with me is assault. For my safety, you must not be allowed to speak. You must obey. That's what they're telling you, and you can see why. Here's where we come into it. If we go along with this, if we accede to these demands, it's over. If we let them redefine speech as violence, the First Amendment has no meaning. They can tell you what to say and when to say it. They can use any force necessary to make you be, be quiet, just as you would do whatever you needed to do and use whatever force was necessary to stop a terror attack. Because they're saying your opinions and a terror attack are the same thing. This is a scary argument, and we should, we should be afraid of it.